Hi guys, how are you all going? Welcome back to another Legal Studies video. In this video, I'll be discussing civil pretrial procedures. Now, before I begin, just a bit of a background. So essentially, in civil law, the two parties are the plaintiff and the defendant, okay? So the plaintiff is the party who brings action against the defendant. They're the ones who sue the defendant for compensation, and they're the, the plaintiff is the one who claims the defendant has infringed upon their livelihood and caused them loss, injury, or harm. Whereas the defendant is the party who they have the responsibility of defending themselves from the claims made by the plaintiff. And if they believe that they are not entirely responsible for the plaintiff's harm, they can actually make a counterclaim. So they can countersue. And then in order to be successful in winning a civil case, the plaintiff must prove to the judge or jury that their version of events is at least 51% likely to be true. Now, there are what is known, well, there is what is known as civil pretrial procedure. So before a civil case goes to court, or before it reaches trial, before it goes to trial, there are civil pretrial procedures. One of the main types of civil pretrial procedures is pleadings. Okay, pleadings. Um, essentially, pleadings are a series of statements exchanged between the plaintiff and the defendant. An example is a writ, so W-R-I-T, -R a writ, which is basically it's when the plaintiff sets out their claim. So what the, they put in writing, what the harm that the defendant caused them, for example. Um, and there is also, as part of the pleadings process, there is what is known as the defense and reply. So after the plaintiff sets out the writ and basically states what the defendant actually did and the harm they caused them, the defendant also has the opportunity, well, that they are usually also expected to actually provide a defense and reply. So the defendant, yeah, they provide a defense, a reply, and they, for, and for example, if they believe that they're not entirely responsible, if they're not, if the defendant believes they're not responsible for the plaintiff's harm, or at least not one hundred percent responsible for the plaintiff's harm, they can make they can make a counterclaim. If they decide to make a counterclaim, this has to be set out in the defence and reply. So that's the first type of civil pretrial. That's the first civil pretrial procedure: pleadings. Another type, the second civil pretrial procedure is known as further and better particulars. So before a case reaches, before a civil case reaches trial, essentially, um, either further and better particulars, they're not compulsory, they're not a compulsory stage in the pretrial procedures, but essentially, it's when either the plaintiff or defendant compels the other party to present further information. So it's when either the plaintiff or defendant is compelled to present further information about either their claims or the plaintiff or the defence, so the defendant, for example. Um, now keep in mind, they are not a compulsory stage, but if the, if the party who has been compelled to present further information fails to do so, then the court can actually order them to do so. And if they still refuse to do so, they are essentially breaking the law. So if the plaintiff is compelled to present further information, they fail to do so, the court can actually enforce them to do so. Now, when a case does reach trial, there is what is known as the exchange of evidence. Now, the exchange of evidence can also take place during the pre-trial procedures, but when a case reaches trial, there is the exchange of evidence. So essentially, there are two types of evidence. There's lay evidence and expert evidence. So what, are the, what is the difference between the two? Well, essentially... I use that word a lot. Um, lay evidence is evidence given by an ordinary person. So, for example, a witness to a civil wrongdoing, whereas expert evidence is given by a certain professional or a professional in a certain field. For example, an engineer, a doctor. It could be, for example, a nurse. or Yeah. So, for example, let's say you had surgery and there was a side effect after the surgery, you lost, for example, vision in one eye, for example, then ex then if, a, if another surgeon was to give evidence on the stand, that evidence would be known as expert evidence. So it's basically a, an expert in a particular field giving evidence as to what the correct procedure should have been, what the correct procedure should have entailed. Whereas lay evidence might be for let's say I see someone for example, um, or let's say I see someone 
cause harm to another person's property and, the, and that person decides to sue the defendant for damaging their property, I might give evidence, I might give lay evidence. So essentially, let's say I witnessed a civil wrongdoing. If I was to then give evidence in the courtroom, that would be known as lay evidence. Now, expert evidence is not necessarily more reliable than lay evidence, but lay evidence can still be can still be very reliable. Although in some cases, expert evidence is the most reliable, but not necessarily always. Especially if someone's seen a civil wrongdoing, their evidence might actually prove to be highly beneficial. So thank you very much for listening, guys. The three main types of civil pretrial procedures are pleadings, which include the statement of claim and also the defense and reply. There's also further and better particulars, so it's when either the plaintiff or the defendant compels the other party to present further information. And there's also the exchange of evidence, which can also which also takes place during the trial. And it's when both it's when basically people give evidence in the courtroom. Um, the chem, the, for example, there might be lay evidence, which is evidence given by an ordinary person. So, for example, a witness to a civil wrongdoing, or it could be, for example, expert evidence, which, which is when an expert in a particular field gives evidence as to what the correct procedure should have been or what the correct methods should have entailed, for example. Thank you very much for listening, guys, and take care. Bye.